This is your brother, your friend and servant, Prophet Prince Omar. I thank God for you, if you're connected. So welcome to Intention Series Part 2. And this Part 2 is titled Pure Intention. Pure Intention. Father, we thank you for this series. We thank you for the Part 2. And we give you praise because our hearts are opened, our mind opened and ready to receive in the name of Jesus. Last week, we talked about intention. We defined um, intention and we really, really, you know, like we spoke about intention in depth. So if you've not seen the part one series, you really want to go back and see that series. God bless you so much. So today we're talking about pure intention, pure intention. So um, to get started, you can, you know, you can just go to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. 1 Timothy 1, verse 5. 1 Timothy 1, verse, verse 5. So I'll be reading from different versions. So the first I'll be reading from NIV, New International Version. And I read, the goal of this command is love, which comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. I read from KJV, King James Version. We all know King James Version. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned praise god so i think we're good with just these two you know two versions we're good pure intentions now why why pure intentions we may ask why do pure intention matters why the amount of god you talked about intention you defined and now you're talking pure intention you'll be like i know some people might be hearing this for the first time pure intention I, I thought intention was intention. Why pure intention? Now watch this. Why pure intention? Number one, it reflects God's character. Pure intention reflects God's character. If you read uh, Baraha Kadias, listen to me. Anything that is pure is of God. Remember, you are made in the image and in the likeness of God. So whatever you do, must it, it it should be of god so how do you know you are not in line how do you know you are not of god how do you know you've missed this track it's very simple uh my doings are my intentions of god you examine yourself and you say are my intention pure if it's pure then it reflects god somebody say my intention will reflect the lord jesus after today uh you are not saying it say my intention will reflect the lord jesus after today you can add this. I am made in the image and in the likeness of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why pure intentions? Number two. It ensures effective ministry. If you're a minister, you're listening to me. The, see, how you do... How you do ministry is highly dependent on your intention. If your intentions are not pure then what is sponsoring your move is not of God. If your intentions are not pure, what is sponsoring your move is not God. You want effective ministry? Listen to me. If your intentions are pure, you will care about the people more than what they have to give to you. Remember, you are a servant. You must be a servant. The greatest among you must first be a servant. It is not for showmanship. It is, it is not for titles. So people will bow down to you and say, Prophet, highly esteemed. No. We are called to servanthood. The fact we are called to servanthood don't mean you should be used because they are, they are users. We have people in churches that just want to use God's ministers. That's not what I'm trying to say. Are you capturing me by the Spirit of God? 
it helps you you see your your ministry becomes effective if you have pure intention first it reflects god and when you reflect god right i'm telling you if your intentions are pure all of its father what do you want me to do what are you saying not oh what next am i doing no any move you make it's to bring glory to the lord jesus when people come to you, you treat them with love you honor them you love them you tell them the truth you don't lie to them hallelujah praise the lord so the number three point why pure intentions it fosters genuine relationships you want to have genuine relationship with people and not just god then you need pure intention except you want to be a fraud star or you want to deceive people or you want authentic relationship then your intention needs to be pure you need pure intention to foster a genuine relationship people know if you're lying to them have you ever okay do you know if do you know what they call fixed mouth when a person is actually projecting to you fixed mouths, you know, that is exactly how they can pick it when you're not genuinely in love with them. When you're there for gain, when your intentions are not pure, people can pick it, people can tell. People can tell. So you want to foster genuine relationship? Then your intention needs to be pure. Number four, hallelujah, number four, it glorifies God. Some people don't know your, your, the, your, your thoughts, your intention glorifies God. Your intention, it glorifies God in every way. He said, the thought I have for good is of good and not of evil, right? It's of good. So if you do good, Imagine God is saying, the thought I have for you is of good and not of evil. And remember, you are of God. So when you deal with people, you should deal from that. Ah, this is deep. You should deal from that standpoint of the thought I have for my brethren also is of good and not of evil. You are glorifying God. The reason why we are here on earth is to be like the Lord Jesus. The highest goal is to be like the Lord Jesus. What do Jesus do? He blesses people. What is the what, what was Jesus doing on earth? You replicate it here. That is, that is, that is, that is how we should believe it. He went around doing good, healing those who are, do you understand, who are oppressed of the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you're getting blessed. If you're getting blessed, drop a comment and say, prophet, I'm getting blessed. So right now, you need to really sit down and examine and reflect on your intentions. Are they pure? And I'll just give you one or two things how to, you know, do that. So here is it. First thing, how do you examine and prefer? Is it self-reflection? You see it. You need self-reflection. Number two, you need prayer. You need to pray. You need to sit, pray about it. Number three, scriptures, the word of God. Number four, accountability. Accountability, very important. And now, you see, some of you might be saying, okay, if I don't have pure intentions what's what's it what's that have your intentions i'll tell you the dangers of mixed motive it's either you are hot or cold you can't be you can't you can't be mixed no the dangers of mixed motive i'll tell you number one self-interest these are people that it is only self me 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 they don't have orders at heart that is what mixed intention does to you. The dangers, it all of a sudden you just find yourself. It's all about self, self-interest, self-interest, self-interest. Self-interest. You think about you, you go to sediment of God. Do you know itself? Number two, pride. Dangers of mixed motive. You see why your intention needs to be pure? Pride. You don't know where pride just starts coming. You see, the, it's the Confidence, it, it's a thin line between confidence and pride. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you need to be watchful. Pride stands in number three. Fear. Mixed motive causes fear. Number four, manipulation. Oh my God. I, if I talk about this, this will be another series. Manipulation. 
Self-interest brings money because you want them to do what you want to. You money. You don't care at that point. Anything just for them to do what you want. It births manipulation. Now, take a look at yourself. Sit down. Genuinely ask yourself. Is this worth investing in? Do I sit and ask, pray and go through scriptures and ask the Lord that he helps my intention to be pure? You can answer that question. Now, I'll give you a practice. It's like a prophetic practice whereby you go practice it and it will give you results. result. I'm not just teaching you, but I'm giving you exercises that will help you. So, these are the exercises I want to give you today. But before I give you, I would love for us to say this prayer. Say this words after me. Say, Father, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. Lord Jesus, I desire to have pure intention that I may become more like you. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. God bless you for saying that prayer. So now, this is the practice. Let's go to the practice. Number one, ask yourself these questions. And you take a sheet of paper and you say, what motivates my action? What motivates my action? You take a book and you start writing these things. This is you must not be shy. This is the only way you can grab that 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 thing that keeps you 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 know cause you to manipulate people that you know to tell lies to do certain things. You know, you, we need to kill that by the end of this series. Before the end, your life is going to change. In the name of Jesus. So you write. What motivates my actions? Then you write those things down. Number two, question and exercise you ask, are my intentions aligned with God's will? This is how to get pure intention. Whatever, before you do a thing, why am I thinking this? Is it aligned to God's will? Is it aligned to God's will? Is it aligned to God's will? You write that. Then number three, how can I purify my intentions? How can I purify my intentions? You write that down. I gave you the secrets already, but we're going to go in depth on how the next session. I want you to just lift up your hands wherever you are. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for everybody who was connected. Lord Jesus, visit them. Touch them. Their lives will never remain the same again. I thank you, hallelujah, because their intention, their intention, their intention becomes even purer in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Shalom. I love you all.